So in the last part of this video series, we're gonna look at Houdini's three growing tools. It's part of the lab's features they have. So without further ado, let's explore in Houdini. All right, so the last video of this tree series. Today we're gonna look at the tree tools from Houdini Labs. So without further ado, let's open up Houdini and dive in. First thing you need to do is you need to install Labs. If you don't have working yet, you can hit the plus icon here, go to shelves, then find the Labs tools. Here we got it, Side Effects Labs. Click on that one, and then you wanna update your tool set here. I already got mine installed, so I'm gonna skip, skip this, but it's an easy one-click update, and it's full of amazing tools. So let's drop down a geometry note, call it tree or whatever you wanna call it, dive in. And there's two ways to start working with this tool. First way is to drop down a simple tree. No, basic tree, a laps quick basic tree. And you won't see anything straight away because we need to give it a spline input. So we can, for example, just grab a line and make a point in the Y direction and set it to a length of whatever you think is right for your tree. I think 10 meters is quite a good good length and then hit quick basic tree it will cook for a second and now you can see we have a tree it's literally that easy what you can do as well is you can just draw a curve set it to the front view and then transform maybe do grid snapping enter go back and now you put this in and you can see you get a tree like this very very simple very easy but let's go over a couple of the options you have so First of all is the growth generations. So if it is able to leave, you can see what well, it inclines a bit better. So basically we have the trunk, then we have branches, then we have another layer of branches and another layer of branches. So it's like three levels, three iterations. If you hit four, you see now we get extra branches and seven, we get even more, so on and so forth. So that's one important Thing to keep in mind. The resample resolution is, it basically uses a line generator. So if you enable the points display, you can see we have a certain distance between all these points. And if you dial down this parameter, you see they get closer to each other. So you kind of increase the resolution in a bit. I think the default settings are fine, but it's a setting to keep in mind. And the same with the branch resolution. You can see that's how many polygons around it. So it's kind of like a sweep NURBS and it's kind of like how high the resolution is of those NURBS. And then obviously you can increase the radius or decrease. And then we have some shape distort options as well. So this is just like a noise map kind of. And basically if you increase the amplitude, you get more noise into your model and you can increase the size of the noise as well. So if we make this bigger, uh, we get less frequent noise and if we make it smaller we get more frequent noise so that's parameters you can play with as well and you can also play with the offsets here then then we have some parameters for the branches so you have the overall lift so basically how much all the branches kind of lift up and you can see what's what's happening with that you can also increase the prune rate so the prune is where they basically kill off branches so the more you increase it the less branches we have I find that the default settings are quite high. It obviously depends what kind of tree you want to create, but I do feel there's quite a lot of branches, the default settings. So maybe value like this would work a bit better. And then you can also dial in where it starts growing on each level of the growth generations. So now it starts at around 14% of every iteration and it ends at 92% almost. And you can increase that so you only get like branches at the top, for example, or you can decrease it that they don't go up too far. I think the default settings are quite good for this as well, but it's it's kind of up to you for whatever you're after. And then you can dial in how much the branches bend. So you have a min and max. So if you have a min of zero, it doesn't have to bend. But if you have a min of 45, then it has to bend at least 45 degrees. Quite self-explanatory. And obviously you can go down with these values as well and just make a tree that kind of hangs down. And then we have a few settings we can explore for the leaf. So if we put the leaves back on, there's the prune ratio for the leaf. So, okay, how many leaves do we keep? So that's another setting you can play with. It's quite an easy way to generate trees. 
So that's the kind of like preset way. Then we have another way, which is doing it manually. So we start with a tree controller. And as it says, this controls kind of the overall settings of the whole tree. And then we need to append a trunk generator. Don't hit shift enter on this one because we want to connect it to the second slot to the controller input, not the first slot because that will be the line. So if you want to draw a line yourself, you can do that as well in this one. So let's go to the front view again, lay down a couple of lines. Go back, highlight, and now you can see it uses the line input, but you don't have to. If you delete it, you can just set the length in the first parameter, so you can make it bigger or smaller. And that's kind of it for the trunk controller. Like the radius is quite important, but for this setup, you use a lot of settings in the controller. So first let's add some branches, and then we can dial in these values a bit more. And as you can see, it's getting quite slow. So one thing we actually want to do is we want to disable our meshing boolean function first so in order to create nice convincing trees it basically booleans the geometry but for now while we're working on it we want to send it to none because it will just work a lot quicker and i've also added the wrong branch we want the labs tree branch generator so let's pull in the second slot and now you can see we get one layer of branches so we could just expand on this so you could just literally copy paste this note and then hook it up in between now you can see we have another layer of branches and maybe let's add one more and then we can go through these values all right so now we have three layers of branches and some important settings on here is tropism so tropism decides how the branches grow in which direction so the first one is bend along parent so basically the direction the parent bends at it will adhere to that direction. So as you can see now, if we set it to minus one, it will grow all the way with the parent, which is a bit extreme. But a bit of this usually works quite well for trees. So maybe like a value of point, minus point 0.2. You can see some quite nice behavior happening here, which is quite natural to a lot of trees. Then the second value is gravotropism. So if we disable all of these, and you can see what it's doing. It's basically adhering to gravity so if we increase this you can see now it's kind of growing against gravity but if we increase it now you see it's kind of like going down and the gravity is kind of deciding where the leaves are going to get pulled in so now you can see if we put this quite high you get a bit of a weeping willow kind of like tree uh, shape so that's that's one variable that you can play with Another thing to keep in mind is that it tries to land everything on the floor. So you can't really go below the floor level. So depending on what you're after, it could be something you want to keep in mind. Then there's phototropism. And phototropism basically tries to adjust to the light. So it tries to grow towards light. And you can set a setting of where it would be. So that's another value to play with. And let's enable our bend along parent and gravotropism again. And Maybe let's increase the gravitropism to 0.2. All right, so let's keep a tree like this. So the next thing you can play with is the noise. And there's two levels of noise you can play with. So one is the line of the noise. And if I append a null to the second slot of any of these generators, you can see what's happening. So basically, Houdini generates a line. And then it most likely uses sweep knobs in order to create some geometry around it. But the first noise we can play with is the noise of this line. So if I increase it, you can see what happens. This noise gets increased massively as well. And then just like we explored with the other one, you can increase the frequency, the roughness. This is kind of like your bread and butter noises and you have noise type. So I won't go into it too much because you're probably all familiar with it. But the second one is the mesh noise. So if I disable the branch generator again, we can look at that. So if we disable it, the mesh won't have any displacement at all. And if we enable it, you see we get some displacement, which is something you really want to do on trees because there's no trees that is like perfectly like circular. So that's another thing you can play with. Then there's pruning, just like we had in our last example. And you can dial up the resolution as well of your mesh. And as you can see, this dials in the resolution of the meshing of the object. You can add quick materials to it, but you can also do it afterwards. You can, for example, use the branch groups, all branches, to get a branch material on and 
Later when we add leaves, you'll get a separate group for that as well. So that's a way to add materials to it. But you have some basic materials here in case you want to use that. And then there's a displacement as well. So you can load in maps in order to use displacement on it. And then the last thing to explore is the leaf generator. So obviously trees need some leaves unless it's kind of like winter, very far from the tropics. In that case, maybe your tree doesn't have leaves, but normally it's a good idea to have some. And there is a leaf generator. So this is just like the branch generator, it leaves to your mesh. You also have a simple leaf subnode, which just generates leaf geometry. So if we plug that in, we can see we just have a very basic kind of leaf shape that you can use as well. It's kind of good to visualize your trees in this way. And that's it in a nutshell. You can use these lines as well to animate the tree in Kinefax, or you can use a point jitter even on it, or like some noise. There's quite a few ways in which you can animate this. I'm not that familiar with Kinefax, so I won't dive into it in this tutorial. And another thing you can check out as well is you can use mega scans in order to add textures and materials to your trees. And that's it for now. I'll see you in the next one.